Okay, I think I have to do it. <gasps> what were your thoughts from like a influencer analysis, from like a market analysis, from like a utility analysis, risk analysis of the AOC Twitch stream? How could it have been improved? What went wrong, etc. Seems like it was like a fun little event to do. They're trying to do like voter outreach. Seems like it went fine, no? I got a ton of viewers. Probably got a lot of publicity over it. My perspective was, do, is the audience you're engaging with, were they not already registered to vote? Um, probably not, vote? actually. Probably the majority of them either weren't or a lot of them weren't. Young people are notoriously unlikely to be registered to vote, right? Sure, but this is half. This is a half million people who are specifically engaged in following AOC on all of her social media platforms, and specifically engaged in following people mm -hmm. we could generally describe as political celebrities, sure. internet political celebrities. Yeah, and these people if notoriously are aren't registered to vote that much. I think it's. I think any kind of outreach. Like, here's a question: What could she have better done with her time? I think that if you're going to engage with people, don't engage with people you've already won. The reason that, like, theoretically, like. Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden engaging with Joe Rogan is interesting it's because in theory they tap an audience that they don't already have. Joe Rogan has an audience that doesn't seem fully wedded or allied or tied or introduced to Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders or whatever. However, it's like does specifically like young political people on Twitch are they not do they not already know AOC by name? Do they already not know these things? And the reality is probably. Now you could argue about registering for people to vote, but we can't measure that. We don't, we're not, we can't track back the Twitch names, names like that to the registration. And sure, they had a link, and I, I tried to keep a general eye on it, but from what I could tell, it didn't seem to, nothing, no, no dramatic numbers. Uh, neither of the candidates fundraised off of it, to my knowledge, so there's nothing, nothing on that angle. For good or for ill, I don't think Twitch streamers are endorsement blocks yeah yet, so, the, so it's an opportunity it's a super simple opportunity cost question what else could she have done with her time for two hours that would have gotten her that kind of publicity absolutely nothing nothing's even remotely close there's obviously easily well, like a yes for a pr answer there's nothing she could have done well, that would have garnered uh, well, headlines well, gotten well, that much she, 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 could have done, she could have done youtube she could have this is like the, the most what this is the most meaningless difference of all time what, what like, how? Essentially, it's analysis of the cost. Like, it, is it worth it for the potential? Like, if if something went wrong, was it would have been worth it? Because what could possibly could wrong go wrong? A PR, a PR debacle or something like that. She's playing with some of the most brand safe people. Like, of all, she's like in games like Pokemon and disguised toast. Like, well, didn't he, Asan play with her? Or was that or was that? Mid, yeah, and Asan is pretty well, brand safe too. Oh, okay. I thought I didn't know if he was officially brand safe or not. Ugh. I think um, it was e it was easily like the easiest like NPV okay. positive like super huge like publicity like yeah. I I, I want to see like the, a more material thing like yeah it's it's great to go on live TV or whatever like AOC can go on most live television whatever she wants. What did it raise her money? Did it get her did it get her extra numbers? Did it get some voter registration up? Did it ra raise extra I, money? I mean you'd have to check. Or, I'm just saying like, like this space is like the advertising in this space is incredibly valuable and she got a ton of advertising. For free. Well, like, sure, yeah, that's it's on, on her media is the best kind of media. Yes. Yeah, well, and even just the eyes on her stream. Like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know, just that uh, maybe I'm looking at it from an advertising perspective too much. If I hold 5,000 concurrent viewers and I sell an hour of my time, I can sell that for upwards of $6,000 an hour. Like, for her to get 500,000 people on a stream for like two, or not 500,000, but 300,000 plus for two hours. And a lot of these are people that maybe don't know her necessarily. They might be other people coming in from Twitch and watching and shit. Like, I don't know. That's like, that's such an easy, like for free, for no cost, for her to just get on her computer and stream for a little bit. Like, I, that just seems like too easy to pass up. Like, it seems so good. I want to know the metrics. I, I mean, did she raise any money for that movement? What was she? I'm pretty sure what she was like. Get out the vote or whatever. It's probably some 501c3 that does public reporting or from something. From what I've seen, there was no like, there was no like, hey, please donate to this link sort of thing. There was no call. Wait, to wasn't there? Was isn't was she literally doing that? I don't think there was a call to action to donate. Does somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't watch that shit, but like, I, I I didn't want I didn't watch it fully. Someone may can correct me, but from what I could tell from what the reporting saw, there was no call to action for donations because I feel like if that happened, there would have been some news story around it. Yeah, I thought they were doing that IWillVote.com stuff. I thought that's what they were calling out. I don't know if it was for political donations or just to like drive like voter registration. I thought that was the goal. I think there is power in leveraging these platforms for political gain. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's important to actually put like a measuring stick on it and not just say, hey, I was in front of like a thousand, ten thousand people or hundred thousand people or a million people. Like, okay, but what what, did he, what was the actual number than just? Yeah, I guess you'd have to see. Yeah, metrics are important. Just because you don't have metrics on yeah. something doesn't mean it was bad. But I agree, metrics are good to measure like the effectiveness and activity. Yeah. I just can't can't think of anything else where it's like, hey, my politician has you know three or like two or three hours of time. Like, what can they do that's going to, like, smash headlines and shit that's relatively brand safe that reaches an audience that they probably haven't, like, dug into as much before? Like, oh, you should be on, like, in a video game stream with a bunch of, with a few, like, apolitical um, video game streamers and get half a million people watching and then get headlines, like, all over the internet for doing something that no one has ever done before from Congress. Like, you went on Twitch and played the video game Among Us with popular internet personalities to encourage young people to vote. I had to ask my children what Twitch is and what Among Us is. They, of course, knew all about it. Uh, that video has now more than 5 million views. Where did the idea come from? And is it possible to kind of to translate this kind of unorthodox, flashy approach to outreach into actual turnout among young voters who historically do not uh, turn out as much as they could? Yes. Well, you know, I'm, the idea initially came from, frankly, you know, I, I am often on social media and I've been seeing a lot of people playing among us. Um, Twitch is a platform that I'm familiar with as, as a live streaming platform. And I decided that this was something that I wanted to do, not just for fun, but to actually try in the form of engagement. Uh, we do know that Twitch is a very popular engagement platform for other means. People often raise uh, thousands, if not millions of dollars uh, collectively for charities. And we decided to test this out as a voter mobilization strategy. When you add up the collective streams, over a half million people were, v were watching live. Uh, as you noted, five million people have viewed uh, since. And it actually has been effective. We were directing voters to IWillVote.com, mm -hmm. which helps young people not just register to vote, but develop a voter plan. And the thing about voter plans is that we do know scientifically and from behavioral studies that people who make a plan to vote are statistically much more likely to vote than just registering to vote. And what we found during the live stream is that folks from uh, the DNC were tweeting and, and reporting that we were the highest driver to IWillVote.com ever during uh, mm -hmm. the, the cast of the live stream. And we are seeing early returns in places like Florida, where youth turnout is ash in early voting is astronomically yeah. higher than it was uh, it, than in even in. That's like the, yeah, what, what is it going to cost us? Oh, well, she needs an internet connection and a computer that can stream for three hours and then 50 bucks for graphics. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just trying to think of the devil's a answer against that because like, I, I, I've been arguing for that stuff since we started talking about various candidates and streams. Mm -hmm. I grinded my teeth with the fact that some of the campaigns I talked to put little to no effort in their attempts at this. My gut says it's good, but part of me wonders, like, okay, well, what's the counter arguments? Like, well, she could have put in a competitive bid between Twitch and YouTube and see, and, and, and see who bit first. She... Yeah, but I don't know if you want to, like, this is, like, that That starts to get into, like, a lot more work now. Not saying that it's bad, but, like, this is becoming way more, like, labor-intensive now. Like, oh, well, we need a bidding war between these companies to sell, like, our political advertising. Like, that's, like, a way more involved process. It's like, oh, I could just literally turn on a stream for a few hours and get, like, half a million people almost watching and get, like, headlines everywhere. Like, it's, like, so easy to do that. Obviously, I don't have access to her, her personal donor information. There'll be an FEC report in a, in a couple of weeks, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be able to see if that may be... Because for all I know, she raised, like, a million dollars that night mm -hmm. by people clicking onto her website. But I think her website wasn't properly called to action or advertised. Neither was it was, it was Congress, Congresswoman Omar. Yeah, maybe. But I think even without the even without the actual like KPIs, even without our key performance indicators, you know, showing whether or not some advertising action is worthwhile or not, I think there's a lot of intangibles here. Um, I think there's a lot of intangibles here that are worth talking about. I don't know. It was just like such a huge stream. Did it surprise you? Because I, it's it surprised us. Um, no, I mean I think it's just a matter of time. Like you've seen, like political people get more and more involved yeah. on these types of platforms. I do wonder. If the better way of because like the theory, the way the way you better leverage some like Twitch is you don't do, you don't just pop on for three hours, you stream, hours for like high quality content, you stream for like a more mid to lower qu tier quality content, but you stream for a longer period of time that gives you more audience engagement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Does that understand the current numbers? That's my only concern about trying to do the politics on Twitch thing. Like the most effective way to utilize it is you stream for a longer period of time. In times that have premium, like I think AOC streamed only for three hours and a Omar less than that. Are they leveraging the platform in the best way possible? Should they have maybe like put staff on rotation and then they should push up for the hotter hours? Would they have been better off doing shifts? 
for like a longer period of time instead of just trying to do like there's probably like a million things that they could have done better but you know what those are all lessons learned for next time if they decide to do it again even if they never do it again though a single time in their entire lives it was still probably a really really good advertising ploy but i mean yeah they could definitely improve things for next time for sure well like i mean you know i have i have interest in utilizing the space for that kind of stuff i'm trying to figure out like what did they do wrong what could have been improved um they probably could have announced it in a way more public manner in advance rather than like yeah. a single tweet well, part of me is wondering, like, okay, I know what it takes to get, like, YouTube to, like, agree to certain stuff for, like, a campaigns like that. I haven't, like, I know from, like, talking around, Twitch doesn't really have that kind of infrastructure even set up yet beyond a talk to the PR guys and we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Should they have done that, like, that? I don't, like, I don't know. Should they have maybe, should they have multi-streamed? I mean, if she's not partners, so I guess she could have. But would that complicate the message? Yeah, there's probably a million things she could have done better, but I still think it was still a really good business. No, idea. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what, what could have been focused on. Uh, what um, been yeah, I mean, like, more, more clear and transparent announcements beforehand would have driven a lot more traffic, probably. Is, it, is this just the kind of environment where a call to action would be a turnoff? Um, no way. She can do almost anything, and people will, like, worship the ground she walks on. She's incredibly famous um, and can probably get away with a lot of stuff like that. It would come off as organic, I think. And she's literally a congresswoman, so the expectation is already there for her to be pretty stiff, so. Well, sure, but like, she was doing Instagram streams when she was running for Congress, and mm -hmm. though, well, those didn't have half a million, million numbers, those had fairly proficient numbers. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, she was consistently a top Instagram live streamer. She, she was in, at the latter half of her campaign for Congress, because when she was just campaigning for Congress, she was in the top 10% pretty consistently when she was streaming, on, when she was going live on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So like, this isn't, and then further, there's the additional conversations that is, is gaming the most best thing to do on a live streaming platform for this methodology. Like, yeah, I think it comes off as way more organic. I think we've seen that demonstrated that not engaging with the platform correctly just makes you look like a loser. So no offense, but the Bernie Sanders campaign tried to utilize the platform and did it in an incredibly ineffective manner. The Trump campaign is yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. You can't just like live stream the debates that, that people aren't by or have people that aren't even you on the live stream. Yeah. Well, I wonder if maybe that could work. I, I mean, like, it could, but Bernie Sanders, I don't know if Bernie was like ever on his own fucking stream. He did it once, I think, but yeah, it wasn't. And then the rest was, was just like a bunch of WH Omega lols. Like no one even knew. Yeah, it was the interns and the one and the one com assistant who figured, who figured it out basically. Yeah. Which is ironic, because Bernie Sanders was like a radio guy before, when he was young. So it's, it, this could have humorously been like the, plat the, the platform to communicate that kind of idea over. Well, wait a minute, though. Isn't like the whole thing on like, it, like, I, Twitch is like bounce back and forth whether if gaming's like going to be the dominant thing on it or not. Like, do you just strap a streaming backpack to your chest and go and like go walk around for a day as a candidate instead? Um, I mean, you could, I guess. But what will bite that? Um, I mean, yeah, you don't have to do it IRL, but I mean, like, if you're gonna get on to play video games, like, I think Twitch's main draw is still gaming. Like, even if there's, like, okay. a lot of other types of content on it, so... That's fair. I think that coming on to play a game, I think, is a really positive way to do it. Like, if Bernie would've come on and played Among Us, like, holy fuck, that stream would've been fucking huge. Was Among Us around a year ago? No, but I'm saying even if he did it now, he'd probably you know get a fuck ton of people. They would just be funny oh, oh, oh. to watch Bernie like try to fucking figure that shit out and call it imposters and stuff. No, no, Bernie would bring back the chess meta on Twitch. More game his speed. Yeah. I wonder what the numbers were specific for, for Omar versus AOC if I could, if I could get popular. She's younger than Omar, but she as part of her character, she plays video games. Like she's yeah. engaged with that as part of her character. Oh, probably there's a lot of. Poor. I think that it sounds really crass, but I think her being like young and very attractive and everything helps a lot as well. Well, I, I imagine for good or for all, that does help, yes. Yeah. Like you. It... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Would people watch Bloomberg file his taxes on YouTube if he live-streamed it? I, there'd be a market for it, I'm sure. But yeah, of course. But would that give him a quarter million dollars about watching him do it and have him talk about his tax code or whatever if, he was running, if we could time travel back to 2019 for his election or not? Um, I'm, I, I don't think, I think that taxes, I don't think would be as entertaining as, unless there was already a big platform where people went into their taxes publicly, I don't think so. If it was like doing like a short, like little taxes slash finance seminar with like Martin Shkreli, who was known for it, that would probably be a really fucking big stream. Um, obviously there's a lot of potential downside to that though, but yeah. It's probably harder because there's so much stuff you can't really talk about publicly. You're not going to see oh. like financials from some tech startup like publicly posted or something. Right? It's harder to talk about everything. If Warren Buffett were to do a stream to raise money, like fucking loaded up like Robinhood and started trading options or some shit, 
with like Wall Street bets loaded in the background, that would be a stream that would get a fuck ton of people. And he could probably raise a lot of money doing that, you know? That would be funny as fuck. That was something that to me, I, I, I really found distasteful. I was not happy with that when I saw it. Here's the thing about that. Like a lot of people have been like, this is so great, it should be used as a model for organizing leftists online. Here's the thing. I've been excluded from streams based on political reasons. The H-bomb stream I would have gone on um, had I not been banned from the H-bomb Discord where that was done. Why am I saying that? Because people who don't like me and don't like things that I have to say didn't want me to have access to that stream, didn't want me to be able to say the things that I might say um, to people uh, who uh, there were a lot more of them than normal watching it. Now, that was a, a microcosm of this. AOC streamed to do this voting plan thing where all of these people were going to come on and learn about making a voting plan. She talked about games, she talked about this, she talked about that. And we had various uh, left personalities show up in the Among Us games. We had Hassan, we had... Um, I don't remember who else. Uh, but these various leftist personalities were people that are not going to say things that contradict the Democratic Party, the need to have a voting plan, the need to do any of this. Like, it's literally just a stream that is telling you, hey, you need to have a plan to vote. Because voting is so important, right? Yes, it's the most important thing. It's how we save democracy. We vote the fascist out. Which, doesn't that sound, doesn't that just sound a little sus to you? We vote the fascist out, we vote the dictator out, we vote... Hmm. Yeah. But wasn't it nice? It was very accessible and approachable. Yeah, because nothing that is accessible and approachable has an agenda whatsoever, right? Nothing out there is done with a nice and approachable tone with the intention to persuade you or limit your choices ever at all, right? That has never happened before. I've never seen an example of that. Not once in my entire life. He's mad. Did you really take his wife's delay? Cuck that boy from his life's journey.